<laughs> All right, Amanda Seals revealed that she has not been clinically diagnosed with autism after revealing her diagnosis on Shannon Sharp's show. Take a look. No, I have not been clinically diagnosed by a doctor because I'm not paying $10,000 to do that. And most people will tell you that at this age, you don't need a clinical diagnosis in, the, in that sense. Okay, uh, what are your thoughts? Al, I'm going to go to you first on this. What do you think about this? So this is the part that upsets me, that upsets me when media covers Amanda Seals and certain other uh, celebrities. Like I said before, when you have this label as a black, successful, smart woman, when you have this label of being difficult, confrontational, hard to work with, people come after you wanting to prove you wrong all the time. And once again, instead of us talking about all her amazing stances and talking black activism, black women empowerment, we're here picking apart whether she was clinically diagnosed with autism. It's ridiculous. You do not have to be clinically diagnosed with autism to know that you have autism. There are different ways to do it. Therapists can do it. Pediatricians could do it. Neurologists can do it. You do not have to have a clinical diagnosis to be told that you're autism, everybody. This is simple. This is easy. So beating her up because she was not, quote, clinically diagnosed, but clearly she makes it clear that she was diagnosed by her psychiatrist, her psychologist. It's just the same. So let's just stop beating up on the woman or trying to pick her apart on the simplest, silliest and the simplest of things. Let's focus on, a, focus on her positive and not always how we can pick her apart with the negative. That's my sentiment with this. Okay, Armand, what do you think? I think when can we make it in with Amanda right. Seals? I'm tired, <laughs> I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm tired. And it's not even about you know the clinical diagnosis or if it was or if it wasn't. I think for me, it was the idea that you know she did lie you know, and, and she basically tried to blame Shannon Sharp. So here we go. You know, here she is again. Now she's, you know, blaming Shannon Sharp for her lying about being autistic. And then she was on there complaining about Issa Rae. And it's like, now, girl, now we have to feel bad because you're autistic, that you lied about this. It's like, it's always something. I just have decided that I realized that I don't resonate with her. And she probably wouldn't be my type of girl because I feel like not only is there always something wrong and there's always a woe is me factor to it, then she's loud and boisterous about it. So we all have to know about it. You know, most people that have problems, they like to keep it in. She's one of those people that are like, hey, this person hates me. This person don't like me. This person's fault that I'm autistic and I lied about it. It's everyone's fault but mine. And I'm over it. Y'all can have Amanda Seals. I'll sit back and I'll watch from the <laughs> sidelines. I'm signing out of the Amanda Seals group chat because I'm over it. I'm tired. But you gotta, I feel like that's the part, the reason why she shared it, um, Armand. I think she's sharing that there could be a touch of autism because this behavior that she has, mm. this need to always share that something has happened to her is where she stands on the spectrum. And, and there's a wide range here, like because they want, there are plenty of moments where she's not like that, where she's socially conscious and she talks like perfect sense in certain spaces, but she's saying, I'm autistic. That means that there is a part of my brain, there's a groove in my brain that forces me to constantly bring up these conversations on her experience. And that's why she's hoping that this gives enlightenment to why she always does that. Two things can be true at the same time. Um, I've had a lot of discussions with some of my friends about this topic, about Amanda Seals. Uh, Amanda Seals is, is very brilliant. A lot of people that are artistic are very, very, they may lack in social skills and yep. like seeing social cues. They're argumentative. They like to fight. They don't see how offensive or annoying they may be being. Not saying just her, but people in general, mm -hmm. they're not even aware of it. But let's not, we, we have to also address this. She did say in an interview that she was diagnosed. So it did come off and it is not unreasonable for people to assume she meant cl cl clinically, ugh, clinically diagnosed. So for, I think she, people have every right to question it because she brought it up. Now, if she didn't bring it up, it'd be none of our goddamn business. But mm. she did bring it up. And some people <laughs> are like, well, or were you or are you not? So it did come off like, OK, were you not telling the truth? I do think 90 percent of Amanda, Amanda Seals problems does come from this because she does um, have some 
Well, let me not act like I'm a doctor because I am not a doctor <laughs> and I know a doctor, my sister-in-law, but I'm not a doctor. But I'm going to say this. I think a lot of her problems do come from being a little socially awkward and she doesn't really right. see how she can come off. But but we do have rights as consumers of people who watch your interview to ha say, wait, you said this? Because we would hold everybody else accountable for what they say. So I so think- let me ask you guys this. But she was diagnosed. But she hold was on. diagnosed. So she just wasn't clinically diagnosed. But what are we supposed to do with this? What are we supposed to do with this information now that, okay, now all of a sudden she has autism. So now this is, becomes a blanket for all of the irrational things that she has said and blaming everyone else for their for issues that she's had. So now because now she has self-diagnosed herself with autism, we're supposed to say, okay, Amanda Seals, now we get it. Is that no, what you're no, saying? Like, no, I'm like, what am I no. supposed to do with that? No, I don't. I don't. I don't interpret it as that. I interpret it as it just gives us context. It gives us context to why she always feels like someone is coming after her. It's a behavioral trait. So that's front of mind for her. In her autism, that's front of mind for her. That's how she feels. That's what she thinks. She shows up every day feeling that way. So that's what she's going to talk about. That's, I, I don't think it's like, oh, give me a pass for being rude. Give me a pass for being arrogant. Give me a pass for being confrontational. No, I don't think that's what she's saying at all. Well, now that we have this information and now that Amanda is aware of this, I think it would help her out if now that, you know, knowing is a first step, right? So now you know right. that the issue <laughs> may be kind of like toning down some of the stuff on social media so she can get attacked less because it clearly affects her very deeply when she's attacked, right? Or she's criticized. But a lot of it she does bring on herself because she's so open on the internet. I understand that actually. Maybe I might be autistic too, or a little touch of uh, it. Oh, now we all gonna be running around autistic. Yeah, we, we are autistic. You cannot there make There we go. Our mind, Everybody's cannot... autistic at 42 and 50 and 35. Yep. I'm autistic too. Exactly. I'm, I'm tired right. of this. I'm coming. tired of this. You're coming for me now, and I have <laughs> just self-diagnosed myself as autistic, and me I too. feel like you were coming for me, and I am now offended, and I am going to tell you. <laughs> me too.